Greetings in the precious, precious name of Jesus. Let's just open this meeting in prayer. I'll pray for the word. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, oh God. We want to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, Father, for you deserve the highest praise this morning, oh God. Father, we want to commit every single lady that is under this roof into your presence, into your hand, Father. We know, Lord God, that in unity, oh Father, that is where you dwell, oh God. And we pray, Father, that you will bless them. Open their ears, Lord God, as they hear the word of God. Open their hearts that it will become receptive to your word, God this morning. We just want to thank you, Father. It is all about you this morning, oh God. And we pray that you will bless us. Bless the, all the ladies of God. We thank you for the offering that has been taken as well. Father, we pray that you will bless every hand that has given to your kingdom, Father. Lord, let them never see lack in their lives, oh Father, but they will, but Father, be blessed with your hand, oh God. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Greetings again in the precious, precious name of Jesus. Thank you to all of you for attending and um, for coming to our ladies' meeting. We're having fun here, all right? We're having a good time. We're having a blessed time. And uh, we thank God for miracles. We thank God for signs and wonders. Um, that is only possible because of Him. So this is what this meeting is about. It's only about Him. Um, you all may have known uh, or seen what our topic for today is. Uh, it is such a time as this moment. Okay, I'm taking it a little bit deeper this morning. Uh, it, I'm not just going to talk about in general for such a time as this. I'm talking about that special moment in time that we have in Christ. There are only two books in the Bible that... Are, uh, well, that are spoken about specifically women, where they take the lead roles and specifically named after those women. One being the book of Ruth and the other being the book of yes. Esther. How special is that in a, in a world where the man gets the lead? Here we have two leading ladies that have very good stories to teach us. Today I'm going to take you through that book called Esther, specifically Esther 4 verses 14, which reads, if you have your Bible, please open up with me, so you know I'm saying the right things. That's why you must carry your Bible. <laughs> All right, it says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your family or your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. You see, Esther was not queen at first. She was an ordinary lady like you and I. Not queen material either. Even though she was beautiful, she had to go through a process does anybody know what I'm talking about? There's a process of becoming a queen. But there's also a purpose for that process. We all read and heard about the 12-month process that Esther had to go through. She had to be groomed before she can go into the presence of the king. Before she could be crowned queen. The process involved bathing in different oils and perfumes before she could become queen. You see, it was a contest. We all know that sometimes contests could be uh, a little bit hair pulling at times, where you want to tramp the other person down to get up first. Sometimes some nasty comments could be passed in order uh, for you to get up first, you know, so that you could pull your, uh, your opponent down a little bit. But you see, this was a different contest, although it was a beauty contest. She already won because she already had a purpose for the process. The most beautiful would win. And obviously we know that Esther was the most beautiful. So we knew that she would win. Imagine if Esther was, um, Chris, if you could just play that video now for me. 
which was supposed to be an icebreaker, right? <laughs> Imagine if one of those fish was Esther and the other was Queen Vashti, <laughs> throwing sand at each other, spitting out at each other, right? Trying just to beat the other person up in order to get first position. Thank you, Chris. Wouldn't it have been a funny place to be at that moment? When you are in the will of God, there's still a process but it's God who clears that process up. He's the one that makes a way for you. Oftentimes we skip the process or we want to skip the process to get through to the finishing line. But that's not the way God works. When you are in the will of God, you have to go through that process. That's how God works. The prize for the contest was not the crown. You see, everybody wanted the crown, but that was not the prize. Esther knew there was something more than the crown. She was placed by God for such a time as this to save the Jews. That was what her purpose was, to save the Jews. You can own the crown, but you can still lose your royalty. You can own the crown, but you can still lose the position. You can own the crown, but you can still be disrespected. Go through the process. The process paves the way for what God has in store for you. That's the royalty no one can steal from you. You see, the process of bathing in myrrh was an important one. Pay careful attention to this. For six months out of the twelve, she had to soak herself up in oil, specifically myrrh. The other six months was with sweet spices. Myrrh is used to release toxins and harmful bacteria from one's body. That's the process she had to go through. It is known to heal the skin and to support oral health. I bet y'all didn't know that. It's a powerful antioxidant apart from everything else it does. And it is known to combat pain and swelling. For six months, this process had to be repeated every single day. We women love to be pampered, don't we? I love it. I just love to be pampered all the time, whether it's by my sons or to be sent to a special place just to be pampered. And we all want to trade places with Esther. But it was Esther's for such a time as this moment. Even if we had gone to that place of bathing in myrrh, we would never have been able to take her place. Many of us want our such a time as this moment, but we've not gone through the myrrh process. We are so bruised and hurt from where we've come from. We carry pain with us. We have not detoxed in order to move to a place for such a time as this. You see, there was bitter oil and then there was sweet spices. The place in between is where we have the opportunity to either quit or to carry on. Hurt people hurt people. You got that? Hurts people, hurts people. Therefore, the process becomes even more important. There must be a process of cleansing and healing. You have to go through that process no matter how painful it is. Because if you move to the next step, you're carrying your pain with you. You're carrying your hurt with you. And then what happens then? You're not going to be able to be where God wants you to be to heal and help somebody else. You're going to hurt them even more. Then we're going to have two hurt souls to, to have to heal after that. The process may start off good, but it becomes tedious. Imagine every single morning, you just know the routine, getting up, getting into that bathtub, having been filled with, with whatever needs to be there, myrrh, oils, sweet spices, whatever it may be, getting out of there and just focusing 
on the king for one year. It becomes a bit of a tedious job, doesn't it? If I was Esther, I would have wanted to just run to the king. I would have just wanted my crown. But that's not what God wanted. Esther could have said, I've had enough. But she persevered. She went through the process. Because she knew she was getting closer for her such a time as this moment. The process was not her such a time as this moment. It was still to come. We often give up in a brink of our miracle. And then we ask God, why? What happened? Why have you not come through to me? But God is saying, mm -mm, your process is not completed yet. We drop out of what could have led us to our for such a time as this moment. Why? Because the waiting period is too long. We don't want to wait. We want to rush through. Then we ask God, why did I not get promoted? Why did I not get that increase? You see, for everyone else it was a competition. But for Esther, it was a destination. She knew that she would not have any competition if she did not go through that process, if she was not chosen for such a time as this. So she knew already she was chosen. She knew already, even though she had to run that race, she was a winner. The title was already hers, not just on earth. You see, we all fight earthly battles. We all want to ask God, when, 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 why, why, why? Who, God? But God is saying, stop fighting your battles here on earth. It needs to be done in heaven. That's where he comes in place. That's where he takes charge. He fights everything for you. The title was already hers. Ever wondered when your time would come to start a business? I speak to many women, hundreds of women, and most of the time they'll say, I have a thought, I have an idea, but I just don't know how to go about planning that business, how to go about starting that business. I do not have the capital, but why did God put that passion in me to have that business? You have to go through that process. Sometimes that process means reading your Bible, praying every single day like how Daniel did. He denied what was the law of the land, and he said, I'm standing for God. If I die, I die. And that's okay, because God got me. The title was already Esther's. You see that beautiful car that you want to drive? That dream home you want to live in? That promotion you want to achieve? is all in the hand of God. Do not doubt that. The question is, have you completed the process? Many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22, verses 14. We all have a dream. But is that dream in the plan of God? We all have a purpose. We are all called, but very few make it to the place of being chosen. The ones that complete the process are the ones that reach their destination. Have you gone through the process of cleansing yourself? One of the most important processes is that, mm. cleansing yourself. Sometimes it's more than a physical cleansing. It's a deeper cleansing. It's a spiritual cleansing for such a time as this. You your for such, such a time as this moment may take more than a year for you to reach, but be on guard because the enemy is ready to snatch you for such a time as this moment. Start the preparation. Stay focused and remember, no one else is in the running for your such a time as this moment. I think once we realize that, we will actually reach our destination quicker than we expected. It is ordered by God only for you. It is molded only for you. You already have the crown. It's just the process to be completed. 
Do not despise the process. You may be, you may be at the starting line. The race is about to start. Don't lose sight of what is to be won. I know when we all get married, we want to wear the crown, the tiara. In fact, I was meant to bring mine today. We all have that tiara or some headpiece. But you see, the starting point is not the important point. It's the completion. We go through so many counseling sessions with this to forces. From love, it turns to hatred. And it's such a hard place to counsel two people that once loved each other. The crown is not the purpose. The crown is not the destination. You can dress up, but you may not always meet that point of where you should be. Don't lose sight of what is to be won. I have listened to many female preachers. Let me tell you about this one. I've listened to many thousands of female preachers, some in person and some over the internet. You have a whole lot. And I often ask God, when will I be outspoken like her? When will I be able to captivate the audience like them? When will I be able to speak without my notes, which I, <laughs> I can't do without? You know, and God kept on telling me, stay in your lane. Do not cross lanes. Because once you cross lanes, what happens? It becomes an obstacle course. When you, anything says from, from God, yes, it may be a little hard, but it's not an obstacle course when you've got to look and jump and cross over. It is easy to process. And in doing so, I could lose my for such a time as this moment. I could be in it, but I'm so focused in somebody else's that I'm losing sight of my own. Run your own race. Run in your own lane. Do not cross that lane. Your titles do not determine your crowning moment. It's the process that does. If Esther needed a year to prepare for the king, how are you preparing for the king of kings? That's what we're here for. Are you ready? Have you done everything you can to complete the process of one day being in the presence of the king of kings? That's one day. What about today? Have you prepared yourself to meet with the king? We don't have to wait for that one day. He's in our midst right now. He's in our presence right now. But how have we come before him? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you preparing for him? Your for such a time as this moment as a Christian woman should always be planted on the word of God. He's the one that blesses and he's the one that holds your hand through the process. Myrrh. What is myrrh? When myrrh is translated, it translates to the word bitter. More specifically, bitter root. We all have bitter roots. But here, for Esther, it was used as a cleansing bitter root. The process may be bitter, but once we go through that cleansing process, it makes you whole. It makes you complete. The process may be painful, but once it's complete, like Esther, you can say, if I perish, I perish. Esther 4 verses 15 says, Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. You see, all those brave souls in the Bible that stood for Christ had to step out a little, put themselves in the front line and, and say, listen, God is before me. No one can be against me. They had to take a leap of faith. They had to stand before people. They had to stand before giants, just like David did. But you know what? He slayed that giant, just like you. You are more than capable of doing that. You need to be bold and trust the process. If God is taking you through a process, he will sustain you. You will be, you will find favor even in the most unfavorable conditions. I have seen that in my own life. 
where many other people could be blessed. Many other people could stand in a certain position. But God said, no, I want you. Who am I? I'm an empty person. I'm a broken person. But God still wants me. If I perish, I perish. Stand up, woman of God. You need to rise up. You need to, to move into a position of faith. You know when we, when we do our washing, oftentimes the socks, you know, we can never find them in the pairs because we dry them separately, right? But I have a technique. I make sure I find the pair and then put them on the line. So whoever takes off the clothes from the line needs to pair them, okay? So where am I going with that? We need to keep it together. The socks, that is. Keep the socks together. If you want to reach your destination, you need to keep it together. Do not let the enemy come into your way. Do not let him rob you of the other half of what could complete your destination. Keep it together. We all know that in order to have a solid foundation for a house, the cement needs to dry. Okay? There's a process. There's a process. The wait may be long, but the results are worth it. You cannot lay a brick on a wobbly foundation. You have to wait for it to dry. There's a picture that will go up. And it says, environment matters. What's around you gets on you. How powerful is that? That's a bee. A, a, bee, will, a bee will attract pollen. Right? What are you attracting this morning? Whatever you attract could be either in the way of your for such a time as this moment, or it could propel you to your next level of reaching your destination. You see, Esther uh, stood out because she was chosen. She had to stand up as well. She did not only fight for herself. She fought for a nation. She fought for an entirely, all the Jews. Right? But she also paid the way for Mordecai. He became second in rank to the king, a Jew. All he took was one lady, one lady to do all of that. Are you that one person today? Are you the person standing in your own way this morning? I will not let anyone stand in my way for what God has planned for me. I was busy making uh, these magnets. <coughs> I was busy making these magnets um, this is one inch. yesterday, right? You know, I, I love to leave you with little messages that you can carry out. Sometimes you can forget, forget what I've spoken, but when you look at this, you will remember everything. So I had asked for the glue gun, and um, so it was the evening time I sat. I took a tray, I placed it on my lap, and I sat on the sofa. While sitting, I decided, okay, you know what, I need the glue gun to heat up a little bit. So I plugged it on. And when I plugged the glue gun on, I went back to the sofa, I put the tray back on my lap, and I begin to line up the crowns, okay? I lined up the crowns. This was the preparation stage, right? And the glue gun is on my lap on this tray. And Pastor was uh, sitting on the other sofa, and the boys were busy in their room. But while doing this, I picked up the glue gun, and the next thing I know, it blew up. It blew up, and it had glue sticks in it. It had glue sticks in it. So obviously, it was on, which meant it was heated. The whole thing exploded and it, the, the glue rested on my stomach, the hot glue. But you know, I used that and I said to God, 
Now I know this message needed to be preached because somebody is being held back. Somebody needs to hear the word of God. And Pastor asked, are you okay? I said, I'm more than okay. I'm ready for the word. This tells me that the devil wants to knock me out. But he will never get that opportunity to do so. And you know, he's trying quite a bit, eh? He's trying quite a bit. But I will knock him out every single time. Okay? That's the God I serve. So you have this little magnet. I'd like you to put it onto your fridge or if your car has something magnetic, place it in your car. Let it be a reminder that you are a queen. That you have royal blood in you. You have a, the king of kings. You are the bloodline of the king of kings. Nobody can rob you of that. No matter which home you're born into, which family, it doesn't matter. We all are kingly. Okay? Let's be like Esther and walk in our destiny for such a time as this. And if I perish, I perish. That's my cue to stop because I'm getting a bit uh, dry throat here. Yeah? But anyway, that was the end of my message anyway. So you see, the, the, the devil tried to knock me out. But I stood up and I said, listen, if it meant me getting burnt just for that one lady today, that's okay. If I perish, I perish. But the word of God will still go on. And God will raise you for such a time as this. And I know oftentimes we think when we hear the words for such a time as this, it has to be this moment. No, it does not. God is saying, go through the process this morning. Do not, do not despise it. He loves you. He has something planned for you. But go through the process. Can we just rise up and pray this morning? Our dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord God. Father, we are not worthy to stand in your presence. Yet you still call us your own. We are not worthy to lift up our hands, but yet, Lord God, you still receive our praises, O oh God. This morning, I pray for every single lady that is here this morning, O oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll give them an open heaven this morning. Lord God, those that carry burdens on them, Lord God, those that have hurt and pain, Father, I pray that you will bless them and that they will know that they're not just running this race alone, but you carry them through, Lord God. And Father, you will preserve them, O oh God, and that you will take them for there is such a time as this moment, O oh God. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, just like Esther was great in the Bible. We have living testimonies here this morning. We have living souls, oh God, that can testify of your glory. Lord God, I pray that you will take them through this morning, Lord God. Whatever it may be, that you will help them through, Lord God. Lord God, raise them for such a time as this. When they reach their destination, they will know that you are for them and that no one can be against them, Father. Bless their marriages. Bless their homes, oh God. Bless their children, oh God. Let the enemy know not grab hold of them, O oh God. I pray, Father, that they will stand firm upon the foundation that you have set for them. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor this morning, Father. And we worship you this morning. God, we pray, Lord God, it's not about us. It is only about you, Father. Lord, let us not go into life, Lord God, thinking, what about me? What about me? No, Lord God, it is only about you, Father. And as long as we testify of your glory, you will take us through that process, oh God. Bless them, Father, anoint them. And Lord God, take them through that place that they need to be, Father. Help them to be strong while they're going through their process, Lord God. It may be a bitter process, oh God, but Father, once the bitterness ends, oh God, they will come to the sweetness of your glory, oh God. Bless them and be with them. We thank you that we can fellowship and that we can be gathered here in your presence. We thank you, Father, and we pray in your never-failing name. Amen. 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 Amen.